we are a couple of meeple. Glory be to Athena. We're going to tell you about Omen, A Reign of War, the Olympus edition. It's a two-player card game set in mythic ancient Greece. Yes, and if you have heard of uh, Omen, A Reign of War before, that's because the Olympus edition, the one we're talking about today, is actually an update uh, to an existing game that had the same name, but there are some significant differences between the two. Um, this update uh, is called the Olympus Edition for a reason. They've redone a lot of the card formatting from the old version. They've added some new components and upgraded some of the components. And it also uh, tweaks the balance of cards a little bit in that in the Olympus Edition, every single card is unique, something we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but just so you're aware, the original Omen uh, is the same game with some slight, it's been slightly tweaked for the Olympus Edition. The basic overview, two players each take alternating turns in multiple phases. You can collect income, and that's either coins or cards to your hand. You can then play cards. Um, after that, you would activate any oracles that you have on the board. Um, you can claim achievements. If then, you've met the requirements. Right, um, which we'll get to. And then you fight if the requirements are met for that. And then after that, you have an offering to the gods, which is money or cards. And that's optional. Yeah. Um, so the game is broken down into these five phases, and each phase sort of um, has you managing your hand, because in the, at the end of the day, this is a hand management game as much as it is sort of a two-player combat game. Uh, the game will end when five of the six achievements that each player gets, which are identical for each player, when five of those six for one player have been accomplished, the game is over, or two of the cities that you're fighting for in the center of the board have run out of cards. Um, each city is made up of four reward cards, which we'll talk about in a second, and you've got six achievements in front of you, which um, sort of give you an objective uh, while you're playing the game. This is um, this game is very atypical of sort of competitive two-player card games, and because it asks you to defeat your opponent um, by points, and you get points for different things in the game, but your primary method of defeating them is not directly head-to-head. -head. It is, for the most part, trying to accomplish certain feats um, in the game, uh, whether that is making your opponent discard three or more cards, whether that's having a certain type of unit in each of the three cities in the game, and there's six different ones, and so each turn that you play the game, you're sort of building to try and accomplish one of these achievements, these feats, um, to score them for yourself at the end of the game. So one thing about Omen that strikes me, if you've ever played Race for the Galaxy or other... Um, San Juan... San Juan, something like that, um, you, you kind of have to kill your darlings in that you want to keep everything because you eventually want to play everything, all the cards are great, but then you also have to get rid of them to afford to play the cards that you can actually play. Um, so hand management is super important in this game, um, probably the number one most important thing I would think um, to accomplishing your strategies and to eventually achieving those Feats. And what I like about this game that's sort of different than Race for the Galaxy is that it presents the hand management aspect of the game um, differently than, say, a San Juan or Race for the Galaxy, in that in this game, your cards are not your currency, uh, in that you're spending cards from your hand to play other cards. You actually right. do have money, which is the actual currency to the game, in which you spend coins to play cards. But in the the way that the cards are act as sort of a, a limit onto what you can do is that there are five different types of cards in the game. They're, uh, they're units. They're called units. They're soldiers, beasts, oracles, spirits, and heroes. And each of those cards has a different sort of small, slight twist to the mechanics that they offer you um, when you play them. Uh, so, for example, when you play a soldier, you always play cards to the three, one of the three cities in front of you. A soldier has a special ability that when you play him to a city, or when he enters a city, you get to do the special ability on the card. Pretty simple. You pay your coins, you play the soldier, he goes into play. However, with the other types of cards, you've got like beasts, for example. Beasts, you can pay their costs to either play them into a city with no effect, and you usually want to do that if you want to win a fight because they're the strongest cards in terms of combat. However, you can also pay the cost to a beast and discard it to allow its special ability to happen. So you've got to choose whether you want a card or you want an ability. And the same is true for the others. With, uh, with spirits, for example, you play a spirit um, into a city and you can pay for one of the two abilities it has at the bottom, or you can choose to discard it and pay the cost for both abilities to have both ab abilities happen. So you're, you're getting a, a, some tough choices every time uh, that you play because you've got to decide, do I, need the, do I want the ability to augment what I'm already trying to do? Maybe I want to make you discard cards by playing the ability mm -hmm. because I'm going after that feat. Or do I want to put these into a city so that I can win the battle to earn one of these reward cards that come out of the, the small decks for each of the cities, which ultimately are also worth points at the end of the game. Right. Um, and especially as the game goes on, each turn becomes more and more epic and you really 
sit and think to yourself, okay, what is the absolute best move I can possibly make with the hand that I have right now? And maybe you have like a really great card that, you, that would just win you a city or something, but maybe for right now, your best bet is to take over this other city with a different soldier to prevent the other person from getting a feat next turn. So it really is a balance between the two, whether you want to go on the offensive or the defensive, or if you want to totally just go with your own strategy and not worry about the other player, but often that can bite you and come back to bite you. I find that it, the game starts as sort of a slow build, um, because in order to achieve these feats, you have to uh, get into position to accomplish them. You need certain cards out, like Oracles, which is another type of card, give you sort of a passive ability every turn, and they usually involve looking at the top card of the deck, and then what, whatever type of card that is will trigger the ability or not. Mm -hmm. um, so they give you a little bit of foresight, and so you usually have to set up your turns early in order to make them pay off later. And um, you know, there, it, it kind of challenges you to play certain different ways. When I play the game, I always, you know, go one at a time, basically, with each of my feats, trying to get each one per turn. So if I can get, if I say, if I can get a feat achieved each turn, I can win in five turns, or end the game in five turns, and ideally win. Whereas you, yeah. you don't necessarily go after that. You like to sort of set it up and get a bunch of feats all in one turn near the end. Yeah, I usually kind of wait, wait it out, and then usually go for two at a time, and kind of come back, come from behind, and win that way. Yeah. Usually my, the way I do it. Recently you've actually ended up beating me that way. You sort of lulled me into a false sense of security where I've had the lead going into like some of the final turns and I'm about to win it and then you just like grab two or three feats in a single turn or I'll manage just... to win a couple fights in that same turn and like suddenly have tons of points in your hand that I can't do anything about. It definitely doesn't always happen that way and it does not always plan that way but we'll just pretend that I had pretended that I was trying to do that well, the entire time. It's nice to know that I lost to luck then. Yeah. In that case. <laughs> it wasn't luck. It was strategy based on the cards and situation at hand. Um, so, uh, speaking of combat, um, so a, a combat is triggered in the game when there are either um, five total units in one of the particular cities in the center, or one, your opponent, on your turn your opponent has three or more units in the city, and then you'll fight. And the middle value on the cards is the combat value, and whoever has the higher combat value, um, whenever combat would trigger based on those conditions, will win the city. They'll draw the top card of the city deck, which is a reward card. and. Again, going with sort of the decision one way or the other theme with this game, you can either choose to hang on to that card for two points at the end of the game, letting it go unused, or you can play that card for a very powerful special ability that will augment usually one of the phases in the game that will make that phase um, a lot more powerful for you. Which um, later on in the game, um, I actually usually employ that strategy, like I'll get a couple in my hand and bank them, and then towards the end I can have some epic turns, yeah. a bunch of feats that way. So Yeah, and, and, and if you play them, they're not worth as many points, but like you said, you get the ability to pull off some just ridiculous turns near the right. end. Right, and then you get, ex you get you know, two points for every feat that you that you accomplish, so um, sometimes it's just a numbers game. Yeah, and, and all in all, I, I believe that it is very much a game that is not what it appears. Like, you really have to play the game uh, once or twice to really uh, um, get your head around the way that the designers wanted you to think about the game. Right. Um, rather than what it looks like on the surface, which is like a, a, basically a Greek version of Smash Up. Or... Ah! Or Blood Bowl. It looks like that on the surface. It does I think. look. It does look a lot like Blood Bowl on the surface, um, just with the battling for each like cards in the middle and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but there's way more to it. There's way more oh, to it. Oh, for sure. And then I think I think when we like the first couple times we even played it, there were the whole thing of um, paying for to use two abilities on a card or like discarding the beast to use this beast ability, and then. Also, the whole thing about a soldier entering a city, like there's some... Triggers his ability. Right, and so there are some cards that say, like, move a soldier on your side of the city, which you can Would set up... Would trigger his ability right. again. So you could, like, set up a cr pretty crazy domino effect with some of your cards. And I think when we first started playing, I was just solely focused on battling for those middle cards. I wasn't even thinking about, like, the whole other game that comes with the paying for some of the, the extra abilities you can use. And what's really smart about the system too is because each player has the exact identical set of feat cards that they can achieve, um, you know, you can see when someone's trying to set something up, you can see when your opponent is trying to score something on a turn. Oh, that is so frustrating when I'm like, like one away from like getting, like placing all orc, like you have an oracle in each city or something and then, and then he I draws a card that's like, discard all oracles. It's like, yeah. you jerk. Like So you can actively defend as well. It's not just uh, attacking uh, or sort of like trying to accomplish things, you can actually see when your opponent's trying to accomplish them and well and sort of counterplay them, which is, I mean, that's a must, right? That sort of brings oh, yeah. it back to the two-player head-to-head like co combat game, which it, it interweaves the, the elements of a hand management game and a two-player combat game really nicely into like a yeah. very interesting mix of the two. And I, I have not played a game quite like Omen Arena of War, um, given its dynamics. Right. 
So let's talk about what we like and what we don't like about the game. Yeah. I'll let um, you start. Go for it. There's not much that I don't like about it, actually. Um, just, I mean, on the face of it, the art is fantastic. I, I love the theme, for one. I'm a huge, like, nerd for, like, Roman and Greek mythology. So when he even just, like, told me what the theme was, I was like, I'm down. Let's play this right now. So... Yeah, and uh, my favorite part about the game is most definitely the art. This is some of the most, uh, in fact, it's not some of the most. It is the most amazing looking game that I own. And from an art standpoint, the art in this game is absolutely incredible. It's um, you could blow up some of the like the feet art, and I think like put a gal- have a gallery in your living room, and no one would think it came from a board game. Oh, absolutely, any of the art. I would love some of the originals yeah. to, to the art from this game to hang up. I mean, it is that quality. It is stellar. Best looking game I've played. Best looking game I own. It is. It is sort of a combination of like concept art paintings and like broad brush strokes that look like someone mm-hmm. sort of painted it on the card and there's some that look sort of like a European comic book style mm-hmm. to them and they're all sort of like heinous or disturbing twists on like traditionally uh, Greek mythological figures um, yeah. just really cool stuff this, the Hades cards the cards that sort of represent Hades and the undead are like really sinister and really like twisted and and the cards that represent like um, you know the famous Greek figures in mythology like uh, the 300 and stuff like mm-hmm. that look really cool it's just very hyper stylized and yeah. and what's great is that the cards have no borders the art extends all the way to the edges of the cards so it's just a visual feast every time you play it it's amazing art amazing um, art buy it just for the art alone just to have those cards yeah. they're incredible looking also the coins are like actual like coins like they like make like a clingy sound stamped metal coins for the um, for the uh, coins in this game which is uh, and again that's an upgrade to the original version which were plastic chips they actually uh, upgraded them for um, the Olympus edition in that they are stamped metal coins so great it makes such a difference yeah. it feels so satisfying when you're like actually paying for something yeah. every game should have metal coins as oh, far as oh, I'm concerned for, oh yeah absolutely um, and and, and, you know, the, the high component quality for this game and the relative, like, inexpensiveness of the game is only $25 to oh, buy wow. this game. You get a lot in that box, in that tiny, small black box. Yeah. Uh, it, it's amazing. Which we can, like, travel with, and we've done that before and just played it on the plane, which is great. That was going to be my next point, is that it's a, a great travel game. It plays in about 30 minutes. Um, the box is incredibly tiny. It's very portable. We played in the Chicago airport for a couple hours yeah. when we had a layover there last, yeah, last made, year. Yeah, it definitely made layover, a long layover more exciting. Yeah. Um, and, and just as far as the gameplay goes, I really like that it's always challenging you with tough decisions about how to manage your cards, manage your cur- coins, manage your hand, manage your strategy. It challenges yeah. you to form a strategy, and not all games do that. You know, a lot of games, strategy is very apparent. In this game, it really asks you to really look at the situation and really figure out what yeah. the best move is on Definitely any given time. very iter- iterative that um, as the game goes on, you kind of have to adapt with what's happening around you, which I really appreciate because there are some games where you have to have the strategy from the very beginning and if you haven't established it early on then you're kind of just playing catch up the entire time but with this one I feel like you can you can kind of like navigate it better yeah and, and go you know plan as you go absolutely um the only downside I have to this uh, game and it's really not the game's fault necessarily is that getting a hold of this game is going to be incredibly difficult. At so this we're point. like saying all these amazing things about it. Good luck trying to get a copy. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, um, the, the I was on the hunt for the original version of the game for the longest time. Never found it. Could never find it um, in stores, online, anywhere. This Olympus edition was a very tiny print run. I think it was only 500 copies, and um, I just happened to catch um, the pre-order uh, just by chance. And knowing that I'd always won the early edition, I decided to spring for this edition and, and pre-order it. But it was only. 500 copies I mean to get a hold of this game now you probably have to get some good luck in like a board game geek math trade or uh, Craigslist or eBay or something like that but if you can find it it is well worth it even at even double the price I would say is, is potentially worth it um based on what I paid if you if you were to find it for 50 I could I would say that as, as such a low print run it's a collector game it's a collectible game and that even if you don't play it a lot um or just to have it it, it will it's so sparse that it's it's worth having. And again, the, the art alone. That's some I would pay fifty bucks for all the art that you get in that box on those. Well, cards. I, even if you're not like into like art or whatever, just the the game itself, the way it plays with two players and how quick it is. I mean, the fact that we can pretty much take it anywhere. Yeah. Um, it's just great. Yeah, absolutely. And different yeah. every time we play. I give it. Um, I give it two uh, Greek phalanxes marching forward um, out of two Greek phalanxes marching I forward. I have to. I'd have to do the same. Yeah? Yeah, two Greek phalanxes going for it. Hopefully they're marching together and not against each other. Well, they're a phalanx, so they have to be together. That's the whole idea. Unless it's your phalanxes versus my phalanxes. What are you trying to say? I always win. (laughs) That is a lie. (laughs) Such a lie. (laughs) I don't think you can get a feat or an achievement for 
telling falsities like that. Whatever. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Omen.